So good evening, everyone. I am very happy that you have all joined us tonight for dessert with Andrew and Yvonne. We are delighted to have you here. Tonight is not going to be your traditional webinar. Uh, we will try to impart some important information to you and take out the dry component and make things more interesting. How we're going to do this is we're going to apply this um, seminar webinar to stories, real life stories and antidotes that Andrew and I have um, and that we can both talk about. Right, Andrew? Andrew, you're, you have your mute on. I, nope, it's back on. <laughs> I said some really good things too. I'm sure, that. I'm I sure it was great. I, it was, but I'll say it again. I, I thank you, Yvonne. And uh, yes, as Yvonne said, we're going to be treating this a little bit differently than the regular talking heads, just saying a whole bunch of stuff. And at the end of the thing, your head is spinning and you have too much information. Uh, right. you know, we'll some stories will make you laugh a little bit. We'll laugh a little bit and everybody will uh, walk away probably a little bit better than they were when they got here. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we would first like to start out by saying that um, Beacon Elder Care and Andrew at the Estate Planning and Elder Law Group, we are very vested in supporting community businesses, the local businesses that have been hit hard by this coronavirus pandemic. And I would strongly um, recommend that people shop in their local neighborhood stores because this is what keeps our economy moving forward. So it sends Beacon, Elder Care, and Andrew Gelosa lead by example. What we have done is we have highlighted four community businesses that we are taking on as sponsors for this evening. The first business is Dough Donuts that Andrew's holding up and I'm gonna hold up my delicious yummy donut. Yay, I got it in the screen. <laughs> Uh, Dough Donuts is located at 2170 31st Street in Astoria, so visit them if you are in the neighborhood. We are also promoting Grand Florist, and Grand Florist we have a gift certificate to this evening. They're located at 6537 Grand Avenue in Maspeth. We have another gift card from Good Eats Restaurant, which is located at 6932 Grand Avenue in Maspeth. And our final gift card is to Connolly's Corner, which is located at 7115 Grand Avenue. And Connolly's Corner has a party room and an area that you can rent for graduations or birthdays and such. So, when we get to the end of our program, in order to give out those gift cards, we would ask that our um, participants enter into the chat screen number from one to 10. And then four of those people that get the numbers that Andrew and I have chosen before the show will receive that gift card. So now on to our show. It is my great honor and privilege to introduce my co-host, Andrew Gelosa. He has been practicing law for over 30 years. He's a member in good standing of the Bar Association of New York, the New York Bar Association Section on Trusts and Estates and Special Needs, a member of the National Academy of Elder Law Attorneys and Lawyers with a Purpose. He has lectured on estate planning and real estate topics to audiences in New York City and the surrounding areas. As owner, CEO, and principal attorney, of the Estate Planning and Elder Law Group, Andrew Gelosa takes pride in helping families prepare for their future. He specializes in assisting families with preserving their generational wealth and passing on their legacy that they've spent most of their lives building. Mr. Gelosa and his team help families achieve peace of mind by developing, pers by developing personalized solutions so they can maintain control when they're at their most vulnerable. They achieve this by listening with empathy to each client's situation. Their planning leaves their clients feeling safe and that their future and their family's future are protected. So thank you very much, Andrew, for co-hosting this show with me tonight. Well, thank you, Yvonne. I appreciate it. I appreciate the uh, kind words you said. Yes, I'm Andrew Gelosa, and I am the principal attorney at the Estate Planning and Elder Law Group. 
We are located in Glendale at 7127 Myrtle Avenue. I've been here for about 12 years and I've uh, been practicing, as, as Yvonne said, I'm sorry, I don't really want to admit it, but for 34 years I've been practicing law. Uh, you think that I know what I'm doing. I've practiced for so long, but uh, <laughs> I appreciate it. We do help families. We help families protect what they've worked so hard for. We help people deal with the most catastrophic times that they suffer. You know, we help people be prepared by doing some sound planning. And I really truly appreciate this opportunity to work along with Yvonne and Beacon to bring a presentation to uh, as many people as attend uh, on a monthly basis. So we can talk about these various topics in a slightly different way than it's presented now. And a little bit about Yvonne and her, and her company. Yvonne Murphy is the founder and CEO of Beacon Elder Care, a New York licensed home care agency and Beacon Geriatric Consulting Agency, the consulting arm of that agency. This dualistic agency services New York's five boroughs, Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Queens, Staten Island, and Nassau County. Ms. Murphy's educational and leadership background is really quite impressive. She received her first master's degree in social work from Adelphi University and continued her graduate studies and acquired a second master's degree in forensic psychology from John Jay College. This powerful and profound combination of social work and forensics uniquely qualifies her and immediately differentiates her from other executives within the home care industry. With more than 20 years of experience with long-term care, health care, housing options, consulting and supporting families who are caring for elderly loved ones, Ms. Murphy is known, as, known to be the champion of innovative and diverse care plans for those with special needs. And I am really honored to be partnered with her. <laughs> Well, thank you very much. That was a really nice introduction. I appreciate that. My pleasure. And so to introduce uh, the topic for tonight is how to pay for home care with estate planning. So that's what we started off our series because that's really something that's in many people's minds with the pandemic and people have decided that maybe not now, it's not now when, right? We have with this pandemic that has affected us for so long, many people are coming to the forefront but the idea that, you know, it's time, it's time to start thinking about things. And we'll talk about that. We'll talk about what planning looks like and what it's like to plan in advance and not plan in advance. And, uh, and then, you know, you'll, you'll get a feel for, for what it means and, and, and what's, what's right for you. So a little bit about Beacon. Um, Beacon Elder Care is a licensed home care agency. We have home health aides and nurses. We service the five boroughs in Nassau County. Beacon has been in the Maspeth community for 13 years. Um, we've been a proud sponsor of many local events. We have strong community relationships. Uh, Beacon Elder Care is located at 6923 Grand Avenue. We have a dedicated team of professionals to assist with patient care. Beacon is a multilingual agency. We speak Spanish, French, Punjabi, Cantonese, Mandarin, Polish. So if you have a need out there and there's a specific language that your family member speaks and you're concerned that you won't have the uh, good patient delivery or patient care because there's a language barrier, we are multilingual and we can assist you with that. So what is home care? Home care enables older adults to age in place in their homes while professional caregivers help them with daily tasks that they need to maintain the independence in the home that they love. Oftentimes, people are resistant to home care because they think that it's going to take away their independence. Um, so we have family members that call and say, I would really like to hire your agency for home care services, but my mom is very nervous because she thinks that we are not going to allow her to do anything. She thinks that we're going to be taking away from her independence. Um, these professionals that we have, they are trained, they have certificates from training programs. When they're hired into the agency, they are fingerprinted and that goes into the state system. So I can talk a little bit about my experience with the aides and with client interaction. There's always a trepidation when someone shows up at your home you know you date a lot of people before you take them home and marry them. And with home care, poof, suddenly someone rings the doorbell and now they show up in your home. 
Right, that's Andrew? Just, you know, yeah, that, that <laughs> kind of reminds me of that show, Married at First Sight, you know, like those people, they meet each other for the first time at their wedding, they have a disastrous out time <laughs> most of the time. And that sounds like it's kind of that, you don't get to really get a chance to get used to that healthcare worker who walks in the door. So how, how do we deal with that kind of thing? Well, um, these issues we certainly face and you, it's a personality and it's a skill match. So when someone contacts the agency, we let them know, well, we ask multiple questions. For instance, what language do you speak? Um, what type of foods do you eat? Um, is there, are you a morning person or a nighttime person? Did you like a lot of activities outside of the home? Are you more of a homebody and you want to stay at home? I find that that show Married at First Sight, um, it usually collapses and fails because people don't want to put in the work to make things um, be long, long term. You have to work, have open lines of communication, especially with the agency that's providing the home care service to your family member. Because if there's an issue or concern, we have a nurse that can go into the community and in service that home health aid. You know, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? So if you have a home health aid that is working for you, but there are some issues that need to be addressed, then uh, we come in and we assist with that. Um, yeah, I think that's very important. I think that most people want to age in place. I think that people are most comfortable being in their own home. The unfortunate thing is, is that you know, people decline in health, especially as they get older. And, and the biggest fear I think most people have is you know, falling down and hurting themselves. And other and, and being alone, being alone when that happens. So I think that it's very important, as you say, though, it, you know, there is a, there, you know, you have to have a good match because, you know, people, uh, many people that I've had, many of my clients really don't want someone to come into their house. They don't want, quote unquote, strangers in their house. And, and it, it really makes, uh, you know, it, having a good match between your, you know, the caretaker and the person being taken care of is an important thing to find. So, and that helps our seniors and our disabled remain independent. So what are some of the things that the home health aid can do for you? They can help with bathing in and out of the shower. Uh, a lot of accidents occur, unfortunately, in the shower. You, you think that you're picking your foot up high enough, but you realize that you didn't put, pick your foot up quite high enough, and then you trip and tumble and fall into the shower. The home health aide assists you with in and out of the shower. She also assists you with toileting and with dressing. So if there's a event or something that you are looking to go and attend, the home health aide helps you dress season appropriately. We have some clients with dementia and in the winter, they want to wear flip flops and shorts. That's not appropriate. In the summer, they want to wear their snowsuit and their snow boots and that's not appropriate. So the home health aid, what are you saying, Andrew? No, the home health aid really helps with the activities of daily living, exactly. which is so important. And it, you know, it, it is, it is, it, it's not really funny, but it's unfortunate that, you know, that you need help and, 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 and what's the best place to be to have, have that help is really to be in your own home. So that's what we do. We help people get those kind of, get that kind of help that your company provides. Absolutely. So the home health aid can also help with meal preparation. And I say that this is very important, the meal preparation. There are a lot of medications that require you to take medication before you take, you eat food before you take the medication. By not eating the food and just taking multiple medications, you run the risk of affecting your stomach and becoming ill because you're not taking things as prescribed. The home health aid can also assist with nutritional management. So in the, in the means of assisting for nutritional management, um, low sodium, right? Low sugar. Um, listen, I tell people when it comes time to make me something, I want all the salt and all the sugar. But when you're older, diabetes, heart condition, high blood pressure, that's not necessarily the things that you should be doing. So the home health aid is the first line of defense for that. Next is housekeeping services. We do have people that are very particular and meticulous about their home. And then we have clients that are very 
particular about their home, but the home is really a mess and they can't see that anymore because um, their medical condition has impaired them to the, to the degree where they're not vacuuming like they used to. They're not getting the dishes, the laundry. So the home health aid helps with that, including uh, medication reminders. Our clients become ill and wind up back in the hospital because they don't take their medication as prescribed by the doctor. And when you take your medication as prescribed by the doctor, that prevents you from becoming ill, precipitating your medical condition and winding up in a position that you don't wanna be in. They also monitor healthcare conditions. So the home health aid is the first line of defense to reach out to family members or the agency to let us know that you've had a change of condition. You're in the house, at times isolated, and so they're a good line of defense. They can escort you to the doctors and escort you to social events. Um, now that everything is opening up with COVID and we want to, we can go out and enjoy movies, we can go outside and enjoy events, that home health aid can help your senior person or your disabled person travel into the community to these family events. Um, what do you think, Andrew? Well, I think that you know people want to people want to still have the opportunity to be in the community as long as they have capacity to do that. They want to you know, and 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 most importantly, you know, after this pandemic, especially, not many people really want to go into facilities. Everybody's kind of nervous and concerned about being in facilities. So. It's a great thing that 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 home care enables them to to be where they are, you know, where they have the best outcomes, right? I mean, they, there are studies that show that you know people who age in place at home are much uh, much healthier and much healthier for a much longer time than when they are uprooted and taken out of their their environment. And to talk about too, you know, people with dementia and things like that, you know, they're they're comfortable in that space, even as they're losing their their capacity. And, uh, and, 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 and losing their memory, they still, you know, being at home is, is a good place for them. So having the right and proper care is really essential. Having a plan in place to make sure that home care is affordable is also essential. That's why the two areas really work so closely together that we help, you know, we help people to uh, get your services and, and, and be able to stay in home and, right. and, and to get that health care there. So what are some of the important things for clients maintaining control in the community? Well, Andrew, as I'm sure you would agree that when you're in your home, you have a level of comfort, a level of relaxation, a level of ease. And at times when we come into the picture, our clients have lived in their home 30, 40, 50 years. And even when dementia sets in, your reticular activator can still identify that you're in a familiar surroundings. I'll give you a good example of that, even though I don't have dementia. When I'm driving home from work, my reticular activator drives me in the direction that I'm supposed to go. But if I'm supposed to make a stop on my way home from work, I wind, I wind up passing right by the exit that I wanted to normally get off at, right? Because my mind is just driving me home on autopilot. You laughing? You experienced this, Andrew? Well, I'm laughing because <laughs> I, I still remember, so it was my children. So I used to, when, after my son had graduated public school, I was still driving my daughter to that school rather than the school she was supposed to go to because that was just what I was used to doing. It was just so, so common to do that, that I would just, I would do that, right? I mean, I would follow along what my instincts were, which you know, my mind was definitely sleeping, but my instincts were taking me to the wrong school. So yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, people want to stay in control of things, right? I mean, nobody really wants to lose control. Nobody really wants to lose, you know, their, their independence. It's, you know, so, so being able to help people have that independence, you know, the independent feeling and the control feeling, certainly I think enhances their ability to stay well, right? I mean, I think that wellness in a, in a safe place that you're comfortable with is much more easy to accomplish than being, you know, not at home. And, you know, planning for that is very important. Right, so um, Andrew, as you would say, planning and taking control of your life. Absolutely. Planning to take control of your life. Planning to take control yeah. of your life. I think that's very important. I think this, you know, like there really is in, in our world, there's two types of planning, right? We have vertical planning and we have horizontal planning. Vertical planning 
is good. You're sitting there talking, standing up, talking to me, and we're helping you make a plan. Horizontal planning is waiting till it's a little too late, right? And then what happens is there's problems at that level. You know, you're either sitting, you're in a hospital bed or worse, you're in a funeral home because you haven't taken the time to plan in advance. So doing planning really requires a bunch of different allied professionals, people like us to help deal with the financial and legal things, and people like, like Yvonne's company to deal with the actual boots on the ground taking care of people. Right. So planning ahead to take control of your life, you can do a few things like Andrew said, one, hire an estate planning attorney so that you can get your affairs in order. Two, you can hire a geriatric care manager. So Beacon Elder Care and Beacon Geriatric Consulting Agency, we also offer geriatric care management services. These are specially trained professionals that can help find resources to make your daily life easier. They work with you to form a long-term plan plan and find the services that you need. So I'll give you an example. I used to work in the hospital system and I would have the same patient every 90 days or so come back in because we are giving her a cookie cutter discharge that we give every single patient, no patient you think outside the box, Unfortunately, this patient, she had some dynamics in the home. She lived on a two floor walk up that no one realized. And as soon as her medication ran out and groceries ran out, she started to decondition, wound up back in the home. So I realized by that particular patient that not everyone's the same. When the, the person and the picture of the patient that I see sick in the bed, that's not their baseline or Maybe it is their baseline, but they can't articulate to you that what's going on. So geriatric care managers can be especially helpful when family members live far apart. Um, we can check in on clients either weekly or biweekly. And really what do geriatric care managers do? So we discuss difficult topics, complex topics. A lot of times when you're talking about planning for the end of your life, people are not comfortable with that. And they're not comfortable to talk to little Johnny or little Susie who has been their children. And the only thing they remember is telling them to pick up their clothes off the floor and clean up their room. All right. So they don't have that level of confidence in them that they can manage these plans. So that that's a difficult and complex issue that the geriatric care manager can get involved in. Um, we also address emotional concerns. You know, everybody's been hit in one way or the other by this pandemic. And whether it's a financial crisis or a medical crisis or a social crisis, the GCM is there so that they can give you guidance. And in doing so, they make short and long-term plans. And those short and long-term plans really create a roadmap for you as, the, as our client or you as the family member. And we assist to um, coordinate medical services. We evaluate the living arrangements and we provide caregiver stress. I can't tell you how many phone calls we get in the office from clients that don't actually have a uh, issue that we can tangibly address. They just want to vent. So now we're on the phone seven, eight, 10 minutes with somebody just listening about how rough their day is going because that's part of our job to give caregiver stress relief. Yeah, and, and then they're also uh, often quite concerned about how they're going to deal with the payment for all of these things, right? They've worked their entire life. They've put together, uh, you know, whatever assets they've, you know, they, they've, uh, they've been able to accumulate. And then they have to worry about where and how this is going to fit into a longer term situation because no one knows how long uh, you know, that, that, you know, the decline will last. When someone begins to getting ill, we have no idea how long it's going to last. And, you know, when planning in advance, there is a great deal of options available that begin to become smaller and smaller in the number as we go further and further into wh whatever is happening. And so, you know, it, it's a great idea to speak to, you know, people, your geriatric care manager to, to you know, start making a plan for long-term health, it's also important to speak to us, you know, state planning and other law attorneys so that we can help you plan for how you're going to pay for your care.
how you're going to deal with it. We work with financial advisors as well and, 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 and your geriatric care manager and your home health care company to make sure that there is a comprehensive plan for you to make sure that it works together so you can get what you need to get. So Andrew, I think you like to say plan to fail or fail to plan. Yeah, well, I also what I find I find that you know that if you fail to plan, then you have definitely planned to fail. Unfortunately, <laughs> it happens all the time. You know, something most people don't really want to consider the fact that they are in decline. Most people are in denial about whether mom or dad are losing their capacity. They don't, or or just the fear of you know mortality itself. People don't want to think about these things, and unfortunately. They're all pushing it off to another day. And you know, if if you wait too long, you might not time it properly, right? It's not, it's not a good idea to try to wait until you need help to come and think about how you're going to get it and how you're going to pay for it. So when thing go when things go wrong, you know, what do you do, right? What happens? Well, unfortunately, the worst case scenario is you could wind up in a nursing home. And the one thing that the coronavirus was able to do was shine a bright light on the fact that people would much prefer to be in their home in a, or in a community-based setting versus being in a nursing home. Now, uh, the nursing homes obviously do serve a purpose. I don't want this to be um, about demonizing the nursing homes, right? Uh, but I would like to say that there's alternative plans to nursing homes, and that is to stay in the community. I you know, now with the, uh, with the pandemic, our clinicians, our medical professionals, they are really, have really moved towards telemedicine. And that is a wonderful thing because we have patients at home now that the doctor can get their blood pressure readings. If they have an issue, they call the doctor, they can log right onto the screen and see the, the PA or the uh, nurse practitioner or the doctor in their office. And it allows these doctors to now cover more grounds. But guess what I'd like to say? I like to say that the home health aid is the arms and the legs of the doctor. Right, because the home health aide is the one with the boots on the street. She's the one following with the medical orders. She's cooking the appropriate meals. She's making sure you're dressed appropriately. She's taking you into the community to your doctor's appointments. So people are, are fearful. They're fearful to go out. They're vulnerable and they're invisible, right? You stay in your house. You're, you're not married anymore. You're a widow. You're in an aging neighborhood where people have either moved away and now the people across the street, they don't know your name, they don't know you, and they're looking at their phone, walking to the car, and they're actually looking at their phone while they're driving down the street. <laughs> So what I what I say that home health aide in the house, she is your agent of savior. She is your agent to get help for you. She is your agent to let people know that you're in crisis or in trouble. Um, and having a plan to create a safety net in the home is exactly what people should be considering. Exactly. It does take, and it takes advanced planning because there is ways of, uh, there's ways of paying for it, whether it's, you know, long-term care insurance, there's, you know, planning ahead to be qualified for, you know, whatever government benefits there are. It doesn't just materialize at that point. And, and, and also, you know, there is just, you know, the cost for doing it is extraordinarily prohibitive. So exactly. you know, there, this, is, this is something that really makes sense that people start to think about in advance because waiting till it happens is not a good plan. It's just not a good plan because you're now under stress, frustrated, and have lost a bunch of opportunities that would exist if you, if you pre-plan. You know, you plan for retirement, but what happens after you retire? After you retire, you should see someone like Andrew Gelosa at his estate planning and elder law group. You should see someone like Yvonne Murphy at Beacon Elder Care because we help you plan for the rest of your life. When you're retired, then what do you do? Um, when, when something goes wrong, then what do you do? I tell people when you're going to retire uh, and you speak to your benefits plan manager, I think that there's a misunderstanding sometimes with how they explain what you're supposed to do. I'll give you a great example. When you're retiring, let's say you're a um, police officer. So the fact that you're a police officer, when you get ready to retire, you can check the box that says, 
I'd like to take all of my retirement now, or you can check the box that says, I'll take some of my retirement now, but I'll leave some of my retirement for my wife. If you don't leave some retirement for your wife, then the insurance coverage that your wife has had the entire life that she's been married to you, all those benefits go away because your benefits stop when you're no longer on planet Earth, right? And you're smiling about that. No, exactly, because what we see is people come in to talk to us about planning, and they don't realize that when we're dealing with a married couple, we have a whole bunch of different and various things that we can do. And we can help plan for while both of you are alive and well, what happens if one of you or both of you get sick? And then what happens as you want to pass your property on to your family member? But if you don't come in to help yourself, then you don't put a plan in place for the future. Then what ends up happening is, like Yvonne says, one of you gets sick without any basis or planning. If you don't take advantage of the things that are available, there may not be any money. And you may end up in situations that you really don't want to, like selling that house that you loved so much, wanted to you know, live for the rest of your life, that may not be a possibility just because of the financial realities and the failure to do a plan. So uh, now that we talk about failure to do a plan, um, there's a few helpful documents that people really should have in order to have the best plan. And I yeah. think no. So I think what we should do is now is a really good time to do our first poll. That's if right. If you can bring up our first poll, that would be really great. We'd love everyone to participate and, um, and, and, and answer our questions. So let's see what the first poll is. I'll, you going to read it off, Andrew? Or? I got it. We're talking about some essential but basic estate planning. Documents. We ask you, do you have a power of attorney? Yes or no question. Do you have a health care proxy? And at what age do you think you should create your own documents? There's a few there to choose from. So. Okay. I guess we'll get our responses in a moment, but what we're here to highlight is, is you know, there are definitely some very uh, specific types of things that would be very important for you to do in advance because Having, you know, doing estate planning is not just really planning to die and what you're going to do with your stuff. It's what happens when you're alive and somebody has to come and help you because you're no longer in the best shape possible, right? While you're alive, well and competent and healthy, it's a good idea to put in place these documents that authorize others to help you, specifically your family members and loved ones, so they can do so in a way that's, that, that works for you, that really puts them in a place that they can help you. You know, the reason we want to have these documents is because, you know, no one ever calls you, you know, it never happened in my, it's never happened in my world where someone called me up and said, you know something, I have to come to see you in two weeks. I know that I'm going to have a stroke, right? It's not like, you know, you don't get advanced warning of, of you know, of this, the, the horrible things that are possible to happen and they happen when they're least expected. So if you don't have planning in place, what happens is, is that you don't have to worry you know, there is always an automatic plan for everybody in this world, especially regarding estate planning and elder law issues. You have the laws and the rules of the state of New York that are going to help you, right? They're going to certainly fit in exactly in your idea of what you want to happen. And things are going to happen exactly the way you want them if you rely on, the, you know, like the laws of the state of New York, right? Oh, absolutely. So if you don't have that health care proxy, you don't have that power of attorney in place and you need to make some decisions because now your family member has had the stroke. They're nonverbal. They were fine this morning, but this afternoon they are not fine. And you don't have the proper documents to even apply for Medicaid, give consent for treatment, give authorization for them to be transferred out of the building to a different level of care. So what position does that put you in? Well, unfortunately, there is a what's called a guardian. So if you don't have these important documents in place, you wind up having the state involved in your affairs. I see we have our poll on the screen. Thank you, Tiffany. Andrew, you want to go over it? Yes, I see that we have more people. It's not, not totally surprising that more people do not have powers of attorney and health and, and health care proxy than do have that done. And uh, at what age should you create your own documents? 
people, uh, the 48% said 55 at age 55, 48% at age 18, 5% uh, said 75, and no one chose 66. Well, let's just talk about why we put this up here, because most people think that planning is for like when you get old. But truthfully, what we see quite often is people come in with situations where they've had a catastrophic accident, and all of a sudden they can't plan. So when you turn 18, probably a good idea to think about it. I had someone walk in my office today, and she came in with her 18-year-old son to talk to me about doing estate planning. And, and, and I said, we talked about healthcare directives, and she says, yes, I need one for my son. And I was really so happy to see someone be so proactive about that, because when you turn 18, you are an adult. There's no one, not your parents, not anyone else has authority over the stuff that you own in your own name. And when you're a married couple, if you have property that's in your own name alone, a bank account or what have you, you have no control over that other spouse's property if they become suddenly incapacitated or incompetent. And we see this quite often where people don't have, either they don't have any documents, any power of attorney, or they have one that just is not powerful enough when something happens to their loved one, specifically someone who's elderly, they own a house, they have some property, and now they come in to try to do, do some planning. And what I mean by planning is getting them qualified so that you know they, they, they get the benefits that the government has to offer them, and they don't have a power of attorney that allows them to do the things they need to do to be qualified for that. And again, what's the alternative? Appointing a guardian, right? A gu and, and, and as some of you may know, Guardianship is this really intrusive process. In fact, in the law of guardianship, it says it's the, it's the absolute last resort. Try everything else before you create this thing because it really is so intrusive in a person's life. So, I mean, I had a, a client, they were 42 years old, went out for a walk at night in Fort Washington and lo and behold, the guy gets hit by a car. He's in a coma, we get contacted by his girlfriend the next day and asked about what can we do because you know the cho his children and his ex-wife were reliant on his money and the property because he was paying the bills. And we had no one, no one had any passwords to the bank accounts, no one had any, any access to anything that this gentleman owned. And we had to go and get a guardian appointed for him. And you know, it, it takes some time to get it done and, and it still is and, and then very intrusive. The court is involved in his life for the rest of his life. And, um, and it could be avoided. It, it's something that can be avoided by stepping up in advance and getting some of these documents done. Absolutely. Right yes. Yeah, so uh, I'll give another, a few other examples about this power of attorney, and then we'll shift over to the great reason why you need the power of attorney, which is to apply for the Medicaid to pay for home care. But I also would like to say, you know, you your family member, the, the grandma that's 82 years old, and you're the good daughter, you run to the emergency room because now uh, the mom and you're the good daughter, you run to the ER because now mom is ill. And they put all these documents in front of you, these admitting papers, sign, sign, initial, initial, click here, click this box, and then click end, right? You know what, when you get to the end, if you're the person that signed it, you're on the hook for the bill if there's any problems with the insurance because you sign that document not as the person that needs the care. You sign that document as the fiduciary, the financial party that's going to anchor down that bill if there's a problem. As, and in a nursing home as well, we have clients that come to us that say, the nursing home suing us, my mom's deceased, I don't know why they're doing that. And I say, well, did you sign the admitting papers when mom got to the nursing home? Right. Yeah, that's my mom. Okay, well, now that's your bill. That's your bill, because you signed your name and you weren't the, you didn't have the protection of the power of attorney that you're that person because they're now de they're incapacitated. They can't make their needs known. They can't manage their finances. So when you sign on the dotted line with the power of the power of attorney behind you, you're not taking on the financial liability. Right, Andrew? Absolutely. I think that they, you sign all kinds of documents in a, in a hospital, right? <laughs> they walk in, they not say, me. Hey, hey, they're very your, upset with me in the here's hospital. Here's your paper. Here's your, do you have a PO? Do you have a healthcare proxy? Well, here's this. I don't understand why I can't give out prescriptions in my office. You know, they're signing out legal documents in the hospital. I think you should be able to come to my office so we can fill some prescriptions. It doesn't Yikes. ever make any sense. 
<laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? But again, if you have a plan in place and you have documents in place before the catastrophe happens, you have a much better outcome. You have a much better way of controlling. Everybody, I think, again, comes down to control, right? No, nobody wants to lose control, but how do you maintain control? If you plan in advance, you have the best chance of controlling the uncontrollable, right? Because really, you can't control the future. You have no way of controlling the future, but you have a way of guiding it and you have a way of making decisions in the present moment that's going to help you in the future. And you know, so you know, the point is, is again, we talk about vertical planning versus horizontal planning, right? I yes. mean, when, when you're vertical and you're talking to me and you're coming in and we're talking to this nice middle-aged married couple about what their goals are, where they want to be and what happens and what their concerns are, because no one in their family has ever lived past the age of 63, you know, you may be saying, maybe this is a good time for me to take care of things that will preserve things and put me in place to be able to get whatever kind of help I need, because I don't want to stay home and I don't want my kids not to be at the house. I would like my pass my legacy on to my children. Absolutely. So that's, and that's where a power of attorney also helps, right, Yvonne? Absolutely. Absolutely. So um, part of maintaining this generational wealth is the ability to plan for you, plan and properly protect your resources. Planning and properly protecting your resources can only be done with an estate planning, a competent estate planning attorney. Um, when you talk about Medicare versus Medicaid, this is how we can pay for things when you're sick. Yes, can we bring up the next poll right now? I think maybe. Uh, yes, the next poll. That right here, and then we'll talk about the other things we have to talk about. Okay, we've got another Certainly. poll for you guys. Yep. Stay awake. They're awake. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so I have Medicare. I'm covered for long term care. True or false? How much does it cost for nursing home stay in New York? There's a range of one to 5,000 per month. 5,500 to 10,000 per month, 10,500 to 20,000 per month, or 20,500 to 30,000 per month. And the last question is, what is the monthly cost of home care? Five to 15,000 per month, 55 to 25,000 per month, and then some ridiculous answer, 100,000 to 150,000 per month. Maybe Man, in certain places. I mean, what on to, earth? Where are they with that kind of care? Oh, I, I would like to say it. That's me place. too. Okay, so while our our um, participants are taking the survey, Andrew, you uh, well, you want to go over the Medicaid versus yeah, but, Medicare? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. So, I mean, you answered the question. If you answered the question that your, uh, you know, Medicare is going to help take care of your long term care, then you should have answered that false, right? Because many people make that mistake. I have so many people come into my office. I'm okay. I have health insurance or I'm okay. I have Medicare. So if I get sick, I don't really have to worry about it. And the real truth is, is that's not true because Medicare will not pay for long-term care. At most Medicare pays for a hundred days of care. They'll pay hundred percent for the first 20 days. They'll pay 80% for the other 80 days. And if you have a supplement, they'll pay for hundred percent of that. Once you though come to the end of that, and before that happens, don't worry, the staff is in there trying to sign you up for Medicaid because they know that after 100 days, that care runs out. So either you have long-term care insurance that's going to start paying, or you're going to start paying out of your own pocket. And you know the, the daily rate in a, in a you know, rehab facility or in a hospital is extraordinarily high. It's just, you know, it, it, you, you know you're talking about three to four to five hundred dollars per day. So the misconception that most people have is that they're okay with they have Medicare. Most people, you know, they have health insurance when they're younger, right? They have health insurance, health insurance takes care of everything. Then they get Medicare as, a, as, a, as the, their insurance when they turn 65. And, and, and then, you know, that they don't understand is that they're not going they're not going to be covered. They're not going to be covered for anything that lasts more than 100 days. And if they don't have access to Medicaid, then they're not going to get be covered at all. And unfortunately, to be covered for Medicaid, you have to meet certain criteria. And if you don't plan for those criteria, you have a big problem. So we have a, an answer to that, that, that our poll. And that's great. Most of our, uh, most people, 79% of our attendees 
answered false to the question of whether they're covered for long-term care. Uh, we had the largest number of people put in 10,500 to 20,000, 41% of all people, about how much does it cost to go to the nursing home? So most people do understand how right. much it costs because that is really what it costs to go into a nursing home on a monthly basis. And five to $15,000 per month is what it costs for home care. It's really probably about eight to $15,000 a month or nine to $15,000 a month. And it really is prohibitively expensive. And unless you qualify, the assets that you have, while they're the, better, they're the boon of your life, they're what you have there, the bounty of what you work for your entire life, it's also what prevents you from being qualified for Medicaid. If, because Medicaid is the only payor, it's the only payor program that the government has to pay for Medicaid. So if you have adequate long-term care insurance, which most people who even have long-term care insurance, do not usually have these lifetime policies anymore where it covers them for the rest of their life. They're going to find that they have limited daily limits and they have a limited amount of time, three to five years usually, of what the limits for long-term care is. So even if you have that policy, and we, I mean, I know for myself, the longest stay in a nursing home for a client of mine has been over 20 years. 20 mm. years in a nursing home with, you know, a body that was very healthy and a mind that was not. Mm. And that's kind of what can happen. An average nursing home stay is three to five years. How long do you live at home? You live at home for as long as you need to. There is Medicaid coverage for each one of those types of things. There are two different types of programs. We're not going to cover them fully in depth tonight. There'll be another show where we'll talk more about the difference of community Medicaid versus nursing home Medicaid and what's available for both. But if you plan in advance, you have a chance, a great chance to pass on your wealth to your family and get the coverage and care you need, whether it's to stay home or go in the nursing home. I can't tell you how angry I am when they, somebody comes to me and they tell me that, you know, they've spent down $400,000 of the wow. $600,000 the family had and come to ask me, is there anything we can do to to save some of this, you know, someone should have told them at the beginning that they went to the nursing home that they didn't have to spend all of that now. Or right. when people come to me and say, the nursing home says, just sign over the house deed to us and you can come into the nursing home. You're going to stay here for the rest of your life anyway. Just sign over the deed. You'll come in. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's horrific because it doesn't have to be that way. No. And I'll tell you the one of the big issues or one of the big stumbling blocks that we have is false information, right? Myth versus the facts. So I'll have a client that comes into the office. They are uh, candidates to apply for community Medicaid. And then I get a phone call that says, you know, we're cha we changed our mind. We're not going to apply. And I say, well, why? why? Why aren't you going to apply? It's the best course of action. It'll really take care of your resources and it'll get some home care for your sick loved one. And they say, oh, my neighbor said if I apply for Medicaid, they'll take our money and our children's money. <laughs> so then I say, well, who told you that? And they go, my neighbor. I say, what does your neighbor do? They say, well, he's the plumber. I go, really? He's the plumber? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just great. But if you're looking to protect your resources, your $700,000 home, the retirement, the money that you worked all your life for to save, you should be guided by the experts like Andrew from Estate Planning and Elder Law Group or Eva, the expert Yvonne Murphy from Beacon Elder Care because my area of expertise is to help you preserve your resources and keep your loved ones safe. I would never be able to go to your house and fix any leak anywhere because I don't know anything about plumbing. Neither would I. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know about what I'm talking right now tonight, and so does Andrew. So I would recommend that you be guided by the experts. Um, and, you know, there's a stigma attached to Medicaid, like, like Andrew said. In some communities, when you use the word Medicaid, you feel weighted down be just because of the word and because of the because of um, the stigma that people have attached to that. But if you qualify, if you follow all the rules and the guidelines and you are able to become eligible for this Medicaid, whether it be community Medicaid or institutional Medicaid, you should 
take advantage of that. You should be an active participant in that because I know I've worked all my life to amass some resources. My intention is not to spend it on myself today. It's to leave to the children, my children behind me, because that gives them a head start, right? I pass my resources down, my children pass their resources down, they pass their resources down. I'm starting that generational path. But if we don't make a plan, if we don't do anything, if we don't follow the expert and the expert's guidelines and recommendations, we lose our wealth in our lifetime. And then our children are starting over on their own to amass wealth. And then their children are starting on their own to amass wealth. And then we never have generational wealth. And there's a lot of communities that have a clear understanding of how to take advantage of estate planning so that their resources are properly passed down to their children and they are able to access the care that they need today. Wouldn't you agree, Andrew? Uh, yeah, I would also say on the other hand, there are so many communities that don't have any idea that they can do that, right? That they can preserve and protect what their grandparents had or their parents had. And before you know it, that family home is no longer the family home. Right. Of poor planning, really, or, be, or poor information. And that's kind of why I think Ivan and I are doing these kind of this, this program, because people need to know the things that we're talking about. You know, most people, you don't talk about these things usually, at, you know, going to a, a, a you know, a, a dinner party. Mm -hmm. or, you know, or going out for coffee with friends, you don't really talk about this kind of stuff. And it's not enough people know about it, really. And it really is a shame because, you know, knowledge is power. I think Yvonne said that before. Yeah. Mom, yes, I did, Andrew. I was yeah. just about to say that you pulled it right out of my mouth. But yeah. good line. I yeah. like it. It is. It's true. And, and how many families do you see that just because they just don't know, you know, it, it's just a shame. It, 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 it really, you watch neighborhoods change in ways that they don't have to, but they change because the people are, you know, they just don't know to take advantage of what they have and in a way that, you know, we make available, but they don't even know it's available. So, you know, like when, when you, when you, if you don't know to go to a tax attorney to plan for certain things, then you're going to pay high, you're going to pay a lot of taxes. If you know, a tax attorney and you have you know a tax burden it may be lowered by going and doing planning it's 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 very simple like she said you're not going to the plumber to ask questions about well how you're going to take care of your mom right it doesn't make any sense but people you know people don't know that they the coffee shop and the beauty shop rule those myths that Yvonne was talking about like most people think they're going to take away your house if you go get Medicaid Medicaid's not taking your house they don't want your house they want money back However, if you do planning, there's ways of making sure that you protect against that. And if you don't protect against it, then you know something, your children are gonna to have to wait online to get the legacy because Medicaid will get their money back. You know, we, we help people, Yvonne helps people all the time giving advice about this. It's perfectly legal, it's 100% above board. And all it really is in this country of laws and stuff that we live in, is knowing how to take care of, take advantage of laws that are there for everybody to use. Why not you, right? Why not Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? So, so we are coming towards the end of our show. And I told everyone in the beginning that we have um, awesome gift cards for tasty restaurants in the neighborhood, beautiful flowers, and very, very yummy donuts. So I would like, and Tiffany's going to keep track. It's if you can enter a number in the discussion panel between one and 10 and the first four people that get the correct number, Tiffany will, oh, wow. That first person that put up that number, I saw somebody they won already. So far, I haven't seen the number guess. Wow. Also, we'd like you to put up the name of the Beacon employee that invited you. Please put your name as well as the person who invited you. Thank you for that. And also we will. So um, I'm sorry, Andrew, uh, Tiffany, you're there's so much coming up on the screen. Um, I, I'm sure Tiffany's got it. So. I believe I have Diane Webster has seven. 
Uh -huh, I have seven here. Seven, two, three. And, well, <laughs> I, I think I gave away the answers. <sighs> Well, it's too late already. They, oh, okay, they, one other one just came up on the screen. Yeah. So eight, far, eight, two seven. people guessed, right? Not three people. Yeah. Three? But I told you the numbers, Tiffany, you have them. Absolutely. Okay, all right. Well, um, as, who wins. as um, everybody's putting that on the screen and they're also putting up there who invited them, I just wanna thank everybody. I mean, we, we had over 50 people sign on tonight and, and literally go through the whole thing with us to the end. I'm, I, I'm just, uh, you know, thrilled to share this information with everybody. I'm thrilled to provide it to you in a manner where you can actually understand it and digest it and um, know it later on. Uh, if, you, if anybody has any questions or concerns, please reach out to Beacon Elder Care at 718-406-9500, extension zero. That's 718-406-9500, extension zero. Uh, Tiffany will put that in the discussion box. Also, uh, our website is beaconeldercare.com. And we love when people like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and Twitter. So everybody, please do that this evening. That would be wonderful and a great way to support the company. Andrew. And we also ask you to please uh, go on uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and uh, support and like the Estate Planning and Elder Law Group, Andrew L. Geloza and Associates, 718 514 2066 is our telephone number, 718-514-2066. Our email address is aljlaw.com. That's the uh, website and info at aljlaw.com for any questions. Uh, thank you very much. We do have a survey though, and we're gonna be sending that out soon. And we ask that if you could please, like, you know, we, we really ask you to help us because we want to know, we ask you to rate us on a scale of one to 10. One means we all, both of should have stayed home tonight. To uh, <laughs> 10, that you got some relevant information. You had a few laughs. You were entertained, but got information that will be helpful to you. So we're going to ask you to please fill in those, um, those uh, surveys. And we will be doing our next uh, dessert with Andrew and Yvonne on the third Thursday of July, which I think is the 15th, if I'm not mistaken. So our next online talk show will be July 15th. We will send out invites like we did for this event. And we would love to get email suggestions, uh, info at beaconeldercare.com. If you have any, any questions or suggestions for on a show that you would love to see, we are also going to have some guests on our show next time to add a little more to the conversation. Sure. And we will have four other businesses in the community that we will highlight because again, Andrew from Estate Planning and Elder Law Group and Yvonne Murphy from Beacon Elder Care, we want to support community businesses. Thank you all so much for coming and staying. It's really great. Uh, and next time, maybe we'll have some time for some questions and answers too. Uh, so we're, we're gonna send out the survey? Survey, I think, Tiffany. So, do you don't want to take a couple of questions? Oh, we can. I, yeah, I because we're we're away. right at we're just a little bit past eight o'clock. I know I told everybody eight. I see a few people logging off. Um, hands. Uh, are there any questions hands. that you see that popped up? We have someone with their hand raised. I don't oh, know. who's got their hand up? Someone named Nina. Sorry, Nina. Oh, she said, have a good night. Okay, Lisa has her hand up. Lisa, your hand's up. Do you need, what's your question? Can you unmute her? What, what the Medicaid? They're trying to type it in. Yeah, it's hard to type under pressure. <laughs> always unmute Lisa so she can speak. And ask Lisa, question. would you like to ask your question by verbally yeah. or? She said yes. yes. Okay, so All let's right, let go. her go. All right. Her mic. Mm -hmm. Lisa, are you on? 
Hi. What's your, Hi. what's your question, Lisa? It's me, Lisa. I just have a question I wanted to ask earlier. Part D. Help oh, us oh Medicare Part D. Yes, okay. Medicare Part D. Medicare Part D covers prescription drug costs. So we have okay. Medicare Part A, Medicare Part B, and that's from you worked all your life, amassed work credits, and now you have Medicare Part A and B. B, you have to pay into. But D, okay. they request that you get Part D, and that covers your prescription costs. So that's a great question, Lisa. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. This was very informative. I really appreciated this. Thank you. Yes. Okay. And, and as far as the survey, if, uh, I know that Tiffany just put that in the chat. If you click on the uh, link there, it'll take you to the survey. We would really appreciate you filling that out and give us the information uh, you know, and help us with uh, improving our, uh, our presentation. Okay. Okay. All right. You need any home health aid or nurses? Yes, contact we'll Beacon. Thank you. Any Absolutely. estate planning? Contact Andrew Gelosa. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Have everyone. a great Thank night. You, Good night. Thank you. This was wonderful. Good. Yeah, good, job. <laughs> good job, Yvonne. Bye, everybody. Bye. See you next month. Okay, and then, uh, but Tiffany, we're we're gonna lag behind because we have to take all the names and information all out of the discussion box. And I see our participants so logging. That we'll be able to pull that information because Zoom has already picked that up. Oh, you you can pull it. You have it already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have the names of who invited who. Yep, yeah, I'll have all that information. All right. Mm -hmm. So Oops, I almost hit the leave meeting box. I shouldn't be leaving now, right? <laughs> I got to walk everybody out. <laughs> You're a perfect host. Look at that. <laughs> hey, John. Hey, that was awesome. You're on there now. Well, yeah, I came in at now as, uh, as an admin. Uh, All right, so. would you like to say something? We still got about 30 people on the line. <laughs> oh, okay. well, uh, nice to see everybody. Uh, please look, check out for our emails from both Beacon Health Care and uh, ALJ Law as well. Thanks for thanks for attending. Well, you know, John, um, you do something pretty amazing and important. Why don't you tell everybody on the line in case they want to contact you and give you some business? Oh, well, well thanks for asking. Uh, sure, I published the Queen's Ledger newspaper. So if anyone has any local stories or if you own a local business, please reach out and let's figure out how we can help with an article or some advertisements. Uh, we really have a great experience working with Beacon Elder Care and ALJ Lauren Andrew and his group. They're really just the, the best in the business. So uh, please reach out to me. John at queensledger.com is my email. So please reach out with, with any local stories or help for your business. And I would like to just give a little endorsement for John and the Queens Ledger, right? Uh, they yeah. do our social media. They do all of our um, public uh, announcements. They do our print articles, uh, press releases. They show up at events. They take pictures. They do videos. I really couldn't be any happier with having uh, John and the Queen's Ledger on our team. So, Thank you so much for those kind words, Yvonne. You are welcome. <laughs> Yeah, I'll find out. Give it away with words. Oh, thanks. So we got our participants. They're still hanging on. They're slowly going. Uh, I, I, if I could see the names of people, I can, I can shout people out. If you go to participants. Take a look at participants. I, see uh, I can, if I click that. Yep. That right on the the and then side. you can stretch it up, stretch it longer. Nine new messages. We've got a Mary O'Donnell. Thank you very much for logging on. Joanna. Hi, Joanna. Thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you. Who else do we have? Nina. Uh, it says, hi, I'd like to ask. Nina said she wanted to ask something, but... Um, Still, Nina's still here. You want to uh, ask Nina? If, if she wants to, she can raise her hand again. Astife, thank you for joining. Oh, there's Nina. I'm here. <laughs> okay, How what's your question, Nina? Thank you so much for being on here tonight with us. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I was invited. Um, my dad is a veteran, right? And I'm trying to get him the Medicaid and, you know, so I could be his caregiver and stuff. I like to come in and set up an appointment who I can speak to. 
you can definitely do that. Our, our office is open. We're right there on Grand Avenue, 6923. The office is open from nine to five. You can walk in or you okay. can call 718-406-9500 and set an appointment. We can certainly help you with becoming the representative for your dad and also help you with your Medicaid questions and needs. So, Okay, you're, that's you're great. Yeah, because Stephanie invited me and um, I went over a few information with her, but she said better for me to go here, you know, to get all the information. So, yes, definitely. I'm going to make an appointment to come in. Thank you so much, Nina. You're in the right place. We'll do a good job for you. I hope to see you soon. Okay, thank you so much. Have a great night. Okay, you too. Rosemary, thank you, Rosemary, for joining uh, Bella. Thank you, Renee. Thank you so much. It's nice to see you. Um, uh, Jorge Fernandez, thank you for joining. Diane Webster, how are you? Um, let's see. Harriet, I know you're out there. If you're still on, thank you very much. Lisa, Dawn, thank you for joining. Hannah Lee, Belle, um, Jamie, Javier, wow, Shane, uh, uh, Jacqueline, Karen, Alan, Laura, I'm not going to get everybody, but we're glad that you're all here. Okay, Tiffany, could you take uh, Nina off the screen? Giselle, Stacy, hey, Stacy, Karen, Mary, hi, Mary. I, I know you're out there, Mary. Mary is the Vice President of Business Development for Beacon Elder Care. So if anybody has any community events or any talks or seminars that they would like Beacon or, uh, or Andrew Jalosa to be at, you know, please reach out to us and we'll make sure that we're there. Okay, all right, we still got four, 14 people on the line. Um, okay, Andrew, I think as, as long as Tiffany can pull off all the information she needs, and then we, uh, I, we, we could we, drop we, the participants. Yeah. We can save the chat. We would actually log off and oh, then log off and then we'll all log off and that will end this and then we can get back on as panelists. And okay. All, all right. right. And listen, everybody, we're going to have to let you go. Although I know you enjoyed the show and you don't want to go, but we're going to see you next month in July. What's the date again? The 15th. It's July 15th. All right, everybody. Thank and you. that's all she Good wrote, night, folks. Bye. Beacon says bye. <laughs>